Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to uh, BioPharm's eighth webinar in our series of CTMS webinars. Um, the previous uh, seven webinars are available for download on our website uh, at BioPharm.com, and at any time um, you can, you can uh, view the recorded versions of our webinars. Uh, they include topics such as uh, CTMS 101, uh, CBL clinical best, best practices, uh, post -impl implementation, uh, increasing ROI through an effective CTMS training program, uh, a variety of webinars related to integration. So uh, be sure to check those out if you haven't um, seen our previous webinars. And also uh, in our other practices as well, we have some webinars that are recorded uh, on our website as well. So um, be sure to check our website for that. Uh, today we're going to be uh, we're going to discuss the top ten reasons why you need a CTMS, uh, why why an organization needs an actual CTMS system. Um, the webinar is designed to uh, be sort of a fun way to help build a, a solid business case for investing in a CTMS. Um, our CTMS practice <coughs> has uh, decades of experience with CTMS implementations uh, for organizations of all sizes. And over the years, our clients have told us ways in which having a CTMS has benefited them. And so in the next hour, we're going to pass the top 10 uh, on to you. Uh, as a reminder, um, uh, near the end of the webinar, what we're going to do is we're going to perform a live demonstration of uh, a couple of the uh, you know, most popular CTMS functions voted by you, so you actually have a chance to vote. Um, these may or may not be features we discussed during the top 10 webinar today, but just functionality that um, interests you the most in CTMS. Um, and since many of the people on, on the webinar today may not have had the opportunity to see a demo of a CTMS, specifically you know, Siebel Clinical or Ascend, um, uh, which is our accelerator of, of Siebel Clinical, uh, we're going to use part of our webinar to give you a flavor for what Siebel and our Ascend solution have to offer. Uh, so we'll have a, a poll uh, or a survey question near the end of the webinar where uh, each of you will vote and uh, based on um, what the most popular um, uh, topics are, I'll demonstrate those, those uh, popular topics as, as time permits today. So let me, let me start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Param Singh, and I'm the Vice President of the Clinical Trial Management Solution Practice here at BioPharm Systems. Uh, I've been working in the industry since 1999, um, and I've almost exclusively been working with Siebel Clinical during that time. Uh, before joining BioPharm uh, close to four years ago now, um, I was uh, part of Accenture's pharma R&D practice and was leading Siebel CTMS implementations there as well. Uh, and overall, I've been part of uh, now 15 or 16 uh, implementations of, of Siebel Clinical. Uh, and those implementations sort of vary from um, you know, different types of organizations, pharmaceuticals, uh, CROs, medical device companies, academic institutions. Uh, and they also range from anywhere from um, small implementations of 30 users, local, uh, to global implementations of over 4,500 users. So, um, and each type and, and size and, of uh, organization has its own approach to selecting and implementing um, the, the solution as well. So now that I've uh, introduced myself, uh, I'd like to take just a minute to talk about my team here at BioPharma and just explain a little bit more about what we do. Um, we provide a variety of services and products related to CTMS. Uh, we manage um, uh, implementations of Siebel Clinical, whether those are custom implementations uh, or our, our Siebel Clinical Accelerator, uh, which we call Ascend. Um, also, if you've seen some of our previous webinars, you know that we do extensive work uh, with integrations of all of the, the clinical systems. So, uh, specifically Siebel Clinical and, uh, and related systems. Uh, our approach to, to system implementation is also very process focused. Um, so we, we also provide um, our, our process consulting services to help organizations define and harmonize their SOPs and business processes 
um, across their organization with respect to clinical trial management. And we offer comprehensive training services and products related to Siebel Clinical and RSN solution as well. So this is just a, a glimpse of, of some of the services and pr uh, products that we offer in this space in clinical trial management. And so for more information, uh, you know, please uh, visit our website and feel free to, uh, to contact me directly. So let's look at today's agenda. Um, so as soon as we cover the agenda, we're going to jump right into the uh, reason number 10 of why, we, why you need a, a CTMS and then work our way down uh, to number one. Um, by the end of the webinar, we hope that uh, you'll have enough information to, um, to build your CTMS business case. So after we finish with the top 10, uh, we're going to, um, we're going to vote on uh, the topics for the live demonstration. So we'll take a couple minutes to, to do that voting and, and prepare and then dive uh, into the live system uh, and then um, the um, most popular topics. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with um, answers to um, all of your questions through the chat function. So um, before we get started, I, I do want to point out a few features of the, of, the, of the platform that we're using. So right now, we have uh, everyone on mute. Uh, so if you do have an issue, um, you know, with, with either hearing or seeing um, the, the presentation, please click on the raise hand button uh, on your screen and we'll pause and, and somebody will, will help you address that issue. Also, as we go through um, the presentation, if you have questions at any time, um, feel free to um, just put them in the, in the chat feature and then we'll address all of the questions uh, as time permits during our, our um, Q&A session at the end. Um, so th those questions will come directly to me and, and we'll, I'll, I'll address those at the end of, uh, in, at the, end of the webinar. Um, I also just want to remind everyone that we are recording this presentation um, so we, and we will put it on the website um, uh, after today. So usually with, within 24 hours uh, we can um, uh, we'll have the, the recording of the webinar up on our, our, on our website. All right, so let's, go, let's get started. So reason number 10, um, uh, having a CTMS, uh, a single CTMS, uh, enables us to have simpler maintenance. Um, so maintaining one commercial system uh, and not necessarily a, a homegrown custom system, usually uh, when you have a commercial system, you'll have support from the vendor. Um, in this case, Oracle, if we're talking about Siebel CTMS, uh, rather than maintaining uh, multiple spreadsheets or databases that are homegrown. Uh, so we've seen a lot of clients do, do that uh, and work from you know, spreadsheets and, and access databases um, uh, within their own organization. So having one uh, commercial system is going to lead to simpler maintenance. So, uh, you know, why is it simple? Well, you know, obviously one system to maintain, so it minimizes duplicate data entry and chances for errors across multiple uh, disparate systems or spreadsheets or databases. Um, also, there's, there's no confusion about where the data is stored. Uh, and with spreadsheets, you know, we're all familiar with yeah, making edits and multiple copies or versions and know how that can be a challenge as well. Um, for a commercial system maintenance, there's no need to, to keep that expertise in-house. You can always rely on uh, the software vendor or the implementation vendor for all of your, your updates, your bug fixes, your patch releases, etc. And if you go with a, a hosted solution, uh, there's even less maintenance uh, as you outsource the IT infrastructure for the system. And so with all of that overhead eliminated, you can just focus on your core business of, of managing trials. Reason number nine, um, having a, <clears throat> a centralized investigator database. So storing your past, present, and future investigator, you know, potential investigator information in a central location that can be queried, reported, filtered uh, you know, during site selection. So why is the central repository of investigators important? Well, here 
you have a centralized master set of investigator information that is only in the database once. And it's basically just referenced by associations throughout the system for various studies, sites, etc. So if you have Dr. Jones you know, working in some capacity on multiple studies, well, Dr. Jones is only in the, in the system once, and then we, we relate Dr. Jones to the various studies and sites in, in, the, in, the app, in, in the solution. So this association keeps that data integrity intact um, of that master set of data. So when, when and if there is a change to that core investigator data, that change is then propagated through all of those associations <coughs> and, and making maintenance of the reference data simpler and it assures that it, uh, <coughs> it, the data is, is clean and up to date. So there, there's also the capability to capture additional metadata or attributes related to the investigator from a standardized list of, of drop-down values. So we're, we're ensuring that we can keep within standards uh, and, um, and make it easier to, to query the data and also report from the data if we have standard sets of, of standard fields as well as standard values for those fields. Reason number eight is um, transparent financial tracking. So monitoring all of your planned costs versus actual spend, uh, looking at uh, you know, budgets versus, versus actuals, uh, looking at outstanding balances for um, you know, investigators, sites, sponsors, and vendors. So everything related to uh, financial tracking of, of your clinical trials in one place. So, you know, obviously financial tracking and accounting for clinical trials is, of course, a, a very important feature for CTMS. Um, a CTMS should ensure that all investigator payments, uh, IRB fees, uh, vendor expenses, et cetera, are all in one place to give a complete uh, financial picture of the study region or site with respect to planned versus actuals. Uh, CTMS would, would also uh, enforce business rules uh, and Sarbanes-Oxley compliance through a payment workflow that only allows payment status updates by authorized users at appropriate times within a study. So also by, by tracking study finance, the, the study's financial progress, an organization can identify cost savings and, and uh, you know, better plan for future trials by analyzing the financial metrics of, of past studies. Reason number seven, um, streamlined um, document tracking. So um, this is twofold. So one is you know, creating standardized list of documents to be collected over the course of various types of trials. So the, the CTMS would enable you to create these standardized lists that, are, that, are, that can be applied um, to multiple studies, multiple sites, and then obviously the tracking of um, the, the attributes of, of documents uh, that you're tracking within the system, so standardized dates and other information against, against those lists as you apply them. So in, in, in planning, um, again, the, the system enforces that a standard list of documents are tracked for each study thus enabling your SOPs for documents being tracked within a study or a site, uh, and thereby achieving and retaining compliance within the application. Um, in management of that, in document management, the, the system allows a user to update dates and statuses and other fields simultaneously, uh, and thereby providing a streamlined process for maintaining the list of documents. Uh, also, the system should allow for easy querying, filtering, uh, identification of documents that still require some attention, uh, such as outstanding, expired, or about to expire uh, documents. Reason number six is increased recruitment visibility. So the ability to um, not only track subject enrollment, um, you know, track things at the subject level, subject visit level, but also to be able to see all of that as it rolls up to um, you know, your, your recruitment status 
you know, real-time recruitment status at the study level or at the region level or, or program level against your plan targets. So, uh, you know, why is that important? Um, you know, th that's what tells us uh, how we identify um, high versus low performing investigators, the ability to, to recruit patients and recruit patients quickly uh, versus, you know, over a timeline. Uh, we can also learn which sites are experiencing the greatest number of screen failures and early terminations and actually investigate why, look at that trend, whether it's happening on one site uh, so you know that it's a problem with the site versus if it's happening across all sites that maybe it's, pro it's an issue with um, the inclusion-exclusion criteria of, of the protocol, for example. Um, we can also we can capture metrics on plan versus actual recruitment, and uh, you know actually see how we're how we're working towards planned, um, and then accurately plan monitoring resources. So as subjects and subject visits get get planned out, you can actually um, um, plan out your workload. Um, you know how many how many monitoring resources we need. Uh, when we need to go to monitor sites, and even from a data management perspective, if, a, if all that information is in the system, we can actually gauge um, upcoming workload for, for our data management group as we expect um, you know, the number of CRFs uh, for a study to, to, to increase it for a certain time period. Reason number five is the ability to integrate. Um, so integration is, is, a, is a hot topic always with, uh, with the clinical systems. So streamlining the process even further uh, than the application allows through automated interfaces with other clinical systems um, uh, is, is, is important. So, you know, as we see with any um, and all systems that we implement, the need to uh, the need to integrate to other systems in the IT landscape is very, very important. So the same is, is true for CTMS. Um, CTMS needs to be able to integrate with other systems that tie the process together, such as safety systems, uh, clinical data management systems, um, remote data capture systems, uh, clinical data warehouses, uh, financial you know, accounts payable systems, document management systems, et cetera. Um, there, there, there will always be a, a source system for each type of, of clinical data. So integration assures, ensures that um, the appropriate level of data is shared, and it, it, in that integration it's going to reduce uh, data entry and duplicate errors um, in that replication of data manually across the system. So if we're doing it automated, um, it reduces uh, those errors that result. So it's going to result in fewer data corrections and cleanup. Uh, efforts that are needed in, in those systems. Um, with integration, uh, you can also eliminate the need to log into multiple systems to find answers to a business question. Um, and that becomes um, you know, increasingly true when we talk about um, you know, clinical data warehouse um, and, and you know, life science data hub, uh, clin um, clinical development analytics, CDA. Uh, so all of that, uh, the need to log into multiple systems to get an answer, um, you know, to a business question, uh, you know, through integration, um, uh, that's achieved. And, you know, with integration, with the tested repeatability of any integration, um, the, the, these processes are, are completed. Uh, you can, you know, again, be, be assured that these processes are, are completing uh, consistently and in most cases quickly. Reason number four, um, greater compliance. So um, we can adhere to regulatory requirements and guidelines through uh, user, control, uh, user access controls, uh, who has access to, to, to the system and, and what areas of the system, uh, enforce processes. So we talked about you know, templates uh, that, that enforce or at least enable our SOPs within the system, and behind the scenes tracking such as audit trails that um, you know, captures, um, um, you know, data related to compliance and, um, you know, are, are, are relevant during, uh, during, you know, external audits as well. 
And, and why is that important? Um, well, it's much easier to validate uh, and keep a validated system uh, val uh, controlled um, than, than using spreadsheets or, or, or you know, one-off databases. So having a CTMS, having everything in one place uh, that's in the system and a process that's easier to validate. Um, it's much easier to control access um, at, at, the, at the system level as a whole and also with specific you know, areas of the system where, and even down to the record level, so specific records, you can uh, ensure that, uh, you know, two individuals that have access, the same access to the system um, don't necessarily have access to the same records. So you can actually have uh, different levels of, of uh, access control within a system. There's fewer deviations to, to, that, to process. Uh, you have greater data integrity because, uh, again, you're in, in, in one system. Um, and that also leads to smoother audits. So when, when you are, when and if you are audited, um, you know, having everything in one system and, and a validated controlled system uh, and all the documentation in the same place, you're, you're, you're um, uh, ready for, for those audits and it, it goes a lot smoother than having things, uh, all of your, your clinical trial data uh, in various spreadsheets and, and other documents um, um, in, in various locations. Reason number three, um, robust reporting. Um, answer uh, questions quickly and easily with ad hoc and, and CAN reports um, uh, that, that create one central database. Um, why, why is this important? Well, you know, what you put into a CTMS is only useful if you can get something meaningful out um, out of it, and that's why, you know, of course, reporting is, is, is important. Uh, a CTMS will store historical and current data, so you can do trend reports to compare older data with newer to see the progress and growth of your organization in, in various areas. Um, it stores all of your clinical trial management data from subject recruitment to vendor payments to investigator information, so again, it's a um, uh, you can get all of those questions answered within one system and, and, and one set of reporting tools. Um, uh, for high level, summary level um, uh, reporting for executives as well as detailed reporting capabilities for, uh, you know, site and study teams as well. Um, and you can provide access to real-time data, especially with, with integration. So we don't have a situation where we have out of outdated reports and outdated data. Uh, so everything in your system is, is, is real time, um, so reporting is real time. Reason number two uh, goes along with reason number three around reporting, and that's um, informed decision making. So the system should help you um, identify trends and inconsistencies across investigators, across trials, and business units. And why? Uh, well, you know, the basis of all your decisions should be your experience and your information uh, on your past and current progress as an organization. Uh, and that's going to come from real-time comprehensive data. Um, you can identify strengths and weaknesses in your investigators, uh, your sites, your vendors, uh, even your internal resources. Um, and through that analysis, you can identify areas of risk and put in processes in place um, that, you know, to reduce or eliminate that risk. And, and through real-time analysis, you can actually change the course for studies in progress or, or plan better for, for future trials based on, based on all of that experience and information. And the number one reason <coughs> that you need a robust CTMS <coughs> is, is for scalable growth. Um, you, should, um, you should be able to increase the number, of, um, number and size of your trials uh, your organization manages with fewer additional resources. A robust CTMS should allow the capabilities to scale up with minimal overhead. So no, no organization can afford to, to spend exponentially to grow exponentially. Um, scalable software solutions are the answer. Uh, you can't expect to build a solution that only addresses today's need for your organization 
and expect to use it as you grow. Um, so we have to actually use a solution that's going to uh, enable us to grow and, and actually um, uh, is scalable in, in, in that respect. Um, CTMS consolidates uh, and streamlines uh, subject tracking and investigator payments, document tracking, um, financial tracking, site monitoring, and more, uh, and allows you to manage uh, more and larger trials with, with, again, with less resources and less overhead. And that's, that concludes our list. So here's our, you know, a summary of our list for uh, the top 10 reasons why you need a CTMS. Um, uh, so hopefully that was, um, um, that was beneficial for you. Uh, and again, you know, it's, it's an hour webinar, so um, uh, you know, summarizing that information and, and um, you know, putting some thoughts around that were, were our goal for today. But if you want to have some detailed conversations around um, you know, business cases uh, for CTMS and, and get a, you know, a lot more granular with, uh, uh, with the detail that we've provided here, you know, we're certainly happy to do that. You can, uh, again, contact us on the website. Um, uh, and to, to continue that conversation. And so now it's, 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 time, to, um, it's time to cast our vote. Um, so again, we, we've added um, this today because many of you um, have not had the opportunity to see Siebel Clinical or our Siebel Clinical Accelerator Solution Ascend. So we're going to take a moment to ask everyone on the call which feature or features they would like to see live in the system today. Um, so here's a list of topics uh, or features that we've come up with today. And um, again, today is you know, designed just to give you a flavor for what Siebel uh, and Ascend have to offer. Um, again, but if you'd like a, a detailed demo, you can request it from our website. Um, you can choose more than one um, topic here. So if you, you want to choose your sort of top two or top three, feel free to do that. Uh, and we'll give everyone a, a minute or so to, to cast their votes. And then once I get the results, um, we'll jump into the live system and we'll, um, we'll you know, try to tackle as many of those as we can uh, as time permits. And then we'll still uh, come back with, um, uh, for a Q&A uh, so we can um, address any of your, your questions that you've uh, uh, posted on, on the chat feature. And I also want to remind people of that as well, uh, that if you do have any questions um, either related to today's webinar or some of the features that, that we're looking at, uh, feel free to, to drop your question in that chat feature, and I'll address it at the end of the webinar after we do um, a couple of these demos here. Okay, So I'll, I'll give everyone, um, um, we'll just take a minute or so if everyone can just cast their votes. And um, and then we'll jump we'll jump into the system then. I think people are still uh, still voting, so just uh, we'll take another we'll just take another 30 seconds or so, and then we'll jump into our uh, our live system. Okay. Looks like we we got uh, at least most of our votes in. So um, first thing, um, 
people want to see is document tracking and packages. So I'm going to share my application here. Okay. So before I start, um, you know, I, I do want to uh, let you know what you're looking at here. So this is, we are in Siebel Clinical. So this is Siebel Clinical, um, and that's what we're looking at. And what, what Ascend is, so Siebel Clinical is a very uh, configurable solution. So what that means is out of the box it supports um, the clinical trial management process. Um, and, but, it, but it also leaves things, um, um, certain aspects of the system sort of open to configuration uh, that each organization during an implementation would configure the application specific to their business process, uh, specific to their terminology, uh, and specific to their, you know, sort of uh, um, overall process flow uh, of, of their, you know, clinical trial management. So, for example, um, different types of organizations would um, implement uh, Siebel Clinical slightly differently, um, whether you're a CRO or a, or a pharma um, pharmaceutical company uh, or a medical device company. You, you may have some, some differences there. So um, what Siebel allows us to do is to configure the application uh, specific to our business process and specific to your um, uh, specific to your um, uh, your organization. And what we've done at Biofarm is create a a, a prepackaged, preconfigured uh, version of Siebel Clinical, and that's what we call Ascend. So Ascend is also Siebel Clinical, but with uh, some additional configurations and. Um, like I mentioned before, so based on our, our you know, dozen plus implementations of Siebel Clinical, we saw that a lot of clients were asking for a lot of the same things. So what we tried to do was take the industry standards of, uh, and, and, and uh, for lack of a better term, genericize it a little bit, but um, we saw, you know, a lot of the same configurations requested. So we pre-built a lot of those within within our Ascend solution, so, and that's what, what Ascend is. It's an accelerator to get you, you know, that much closer to, um, to your goal of, of a configured solution for your organization. So that's what we've done with Ascend is just put, um, you know, jam-packed it with additional features and configurations that, uh, that you know, we found are useful for, for uh, virtually all of our clients. <clears throat> so that's what we're looking at today. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not um, Siebel Clinical out of the box. This is what we're looking at is, is our Ascend configuration out of the box. Um, so with that said, um, you know, I'll jump into you know, sort of um, how this is laid out and, and we'll, we'll hit some features, um, again, that were voted on, on uh, in, in the vote. So uh, document tracking and, and packages. So the, the system allows us to track uh, documents at at each level of the hierarchy. So, uh, and what I mean by the hierarchy is, you know, we have uh, clinical programs at the highest level, so which is basically a logical grouping of your studies. Your protocols is are your listing of, of studies that you're running. Uh, regions is a subset of that. So it's basically if if your studies are run in in multiple countries, for example, then you would have a <clears throat> a subset underneath one study that is running in Spain, running in, in France, and running in UK, and running in USA, for example. And then your sites is, is all of your, your, you know, under site management is all your, your study sites in here, uh, and then your subjects. So at your protocol level, your country level, and your site level, uh, and also in your investigator database, which is, are your contacts and accounts, uh, you have the ability to track documents um, you know, ad hoc documents or documents related to specific milestones or specific, um, you know, SOPs within your, your, your organization. So that's what we'll deal with uh, today. I'll, I'll talk about site documents. And <clears throat> so for site document tracking, if you, you know, I clicked on site management, I'm going to go into and select one of these sites and then once I select that site, I can see a whole lot of information, detailed information about that site, uh, you know, Dr. Adler, US001, on this particular protocol. So everything down below is 
detailed information about this one site uh, on this protocol. So I see this document tracking tab, uh, and we call these views, document tracking view, and I can see a whole list of documents that are tracked already for this particular site. Um, so you can see that there's you know, different types of documents that you can track, whether it's a CV, clinical trial agreement, contract, FDA, 1572, etc. So you can categorize the documents that you're tracking. You can give it a description or a name, which is a free text field, some comments, uh, and then a whole set of dates, um, you know, the plan date, sent date, expected date of that document, received date, uh, due date, approved date, etc. So uh, a whole series of dates that you're basically tracking the status of that document in its life cycle. So when it was sent to the site, when it was received back from site, when it was finally approved or signed or completed or expired, etc. So document tracking allows us to, um, you know, basically track the, the life cycle of that document um, at any point in time. And you know, I'll, I'll make a distinction here. You know, Siebel Clinical allows for for really good, and robust document tracking, but it's not necessarily meant to. Um, be document a document management system, uh, you know, like a like a SharePoint or a Documentum or a LiveLink. Um, you know, it does have the capability of attaching documents. So we see this uh, this tab here for attachments. I can actually attach a document in here directly into the application, but it's not going to give me the the you know sort of robust document management capabilities that a um, that a document management system is going to give me for you know, version control, check in and check out, you know, locking the document as it's being edited, things like that. So the best solution that we've found is, is integrating uh, your document tracking list, your, you know, your, the tracking of your documents, and integrating it through either this URL field or other sets of fields, uh, integrating it directly to um, your document management system. So, you know, the, the vast majority of, of document management systems are web-based solutions <coughs> that are easily integrated to where, um, you know, if we have the hyperlink, the internal hyperlink of, of where that document is being stored, we can very easily, you know, integrate Siebel with that document management system, and then, you know, the user would just have to click on this URL or whatever hyperlink that you put in here and it would open up that either that, that folder on your document management system or, um, or directly you know, link you to that document. So that's document tracking from an ad hoc perspective. Um, but what makes Siebel very, very powerful is its, its um, packaging or template uh, capability. And what that means is I can, uh, you know, at, at site initiation, um, my SOP at my organization requires me to track, you know, this this huge, um, you know, regulatory essential document checklist. It, it, it requires me to track everything in that essential document checklist. So for me to have to, you know, create a new document and check it, you know, which category it is, and put in a description and track the dates is going to take me quite a lo quite a while here for ad hoc documents. So what the system allows me to do under clinical administration um, is under activity templates is creating packages which are, again, translated directly from your organization's SOPs of what is included in our site initiation regula regulatory document um, checklist or template. So if I create this template as an administrator, I can define for my organization here are the five or ten or twenty documents that we're going to track for every site uh, that we initiate on every single protocol that we do, right? So I can I can take it to that level. So now now that we've created this package that defines out what well, we need to collect a protocol signature page, IRB protocol approval, IRB IEC, ICF approval, and some of the, some of these other documents. When I go to my site. And um, I'm going to try to pick a site that doesn't have some documents tracked against it. Okay, this is uh, this is okay. 
So, um, so this site doesn't have any any templates uh, tracked with it, and it has just three documents that somebody tracked um, ad hoc. So now I'm ready to initiate this site. Well, I don't want to be able. I don't want to, um, you know, again create those documents. Uh, one by one. So what I'm going to do is go into Activity Plans, and I'm going to select a template. So there's my regulatory document template, and as soon as I select that, the system already, uh, you know, it pulls out those documents from that template, and now you're ready to track these against that site. So you can imagine if we had 20 documents in this template, that just saved me, you know, close to 20 minutes um, of time by just you know, applying those documents uh, automatically. So if I go into my documents tracking, I can see that all of those documents are now here, and you can actually see where they came from. They came from the Site Initiation Regulatory Document Template. So this template capability allows us uh, in the application, again, each level. So this is available at site level, region level, protocol level, and even contacts and accounts. You're able to, to apply these templates um, you know, for documents and even tasks or activities that you do, again, as part of your SOPs for, for study setup or site initiation, um, you're, you're able to, to, uh, to create templates for that, so you're enabling your SOPs directly in the system um, by utilizing that functionality. Okay? Um, so I'm going to jump to the next. Um, let me go back here. I need to check on what the other um, results were. Um, clinical administration and study setup. So we'll look at that. Okay. So uh, clinical administration and study setup. Um, Within the system, that's all done under this administration clinical screen or tab. Um, and sorry, I just want to remind everybody, if you're not seeing a full screen, you can actually select um, full screen on uh, a full screen option on your screen that you're seeing uh, to enlarge uh, the, um, the area that you're seeing of, of my screen. So if you're still having problems with that, um, um, Eugene, hopefully you can uh, uh, send, send some notes on, on how they can uh, enlarge their screen if they're having issues with that. So under clinical administration, this is where you set up your programs, which is, again, just a logical grouping of, of protocols. So whether you have you know, multiple business units or you have multiple um, product categories or you know, different ways of, of um, Segmenting your studies, that's how you would create your protocols, uh, sorry, your programs. Um, your studies, your protocols, this is where you set up your actual, your actual protocol itself. Um, so your, you know, your protocol name, title, number, what the status is, the products, indication, et cetera. So basic sort of high level information about, about your study, uh, number of planned subjects and, and sites. Um, so this is where the administrator would actually enter in your protocol uh, within the system for you to then as a study team start managing that protocol. Uh, if that protocol has, again, multiple um, regions or countries that that uh, protocol is, is being conducted in, uh, then you can you know, take that protocol and again segment it out per, per region. So here you see a protocol, um, the, you know, the same protocol, X2010 909A uh, is, is being uh, done in France, UK, and US. And each of them have different number of planned sites and different number of planned subjects. And they may have a, a different, or they will have a, a different study team as well um, that's, uh, um, that's working on that study. And then the most, I would say the most important part is the subject visit template. So this is where you define out um, your your visit schedule for each of your studies within the application. So, um, you know, it, it's translated directly from your specific protocol document. So, um, I'm going to look at this one here. Um, let's look at procedure-based first. So, there's two different ways, or a few different ways 
they can set the schedule. And, and basically, it's it's meant to be done, um, you know, related to how you're going to actually pay for the the subject visits and, and procedures. So a procedure-based subject visit schedule. Uh, again, you can have multiple versions. Uh, you know, anytime you have an amendment, you would just create a new version. But then uh, down here we have all of their visits. So you would have your screening visit, if there is a rescreening, and all of your enrollment visits. Uh, you know, to the end of the study. So your all your planned visits. You can put in your lead time, so you can see that um, <clears throat> your enrollment visits. Um, if they're you know meant to be you know every four weeks or every six weeks or every eight weeks, you can actually put that lead time in. So when you enroll a patient, it would all automatically calculate based on that enrollment date when their next enrollment visits are going to be in in that in that study. So that's where you define that out. You can also define a min and max window of acceptable days either side of that plan date. Uh, and then for activities, um, you can go down to any level of granularity that you want. So for a screening visit, you know, if you decide that we're, you know, we're going to pay $50 for uh, this procedure, a blood test procedure, and, and $50 to the investigator for getting a quality of life questionnaire or, or any number of tasks, you can actually break it down to that level of granularity. Or the other um, way to, to set up the template is, is do it milestone-based. So basically if you're just paying by visit, then instead of listing out the procedures uh, under screening visit, you would just have a payment that's against uh, a milestone called screening visit complete. So again, this is study setup. So depending on how you're paying your investigators, how that protocol has been designed, uh, you would actually design that protocol and that subject visit schedule directly um, in, in this view under clinical administration to do that, that study setup at this level as well. Now, we've, we've put in some dollar amounts here. That these are standard dollar amounts that um, um, are for the study uh, as a whole. But uh, you know, we all know that different sites will get different negotiated rates for, for some, of those, uh, some of those activities. So you do still have a uh, capability at the site level to do protocol uh, exceptions which basically says that, okay, you know, we have a uh, relationship with Dr. Jones, and instead of $100 for the screening visit, we've negotiated $125 or $150. So you have the ability to override these amounts at a site level, but, you know, here's where you, you have the opportunity to, to basically standardize across, um, you know, um, those visits and activities, uh, if, you know, if, if um, uh, if most of the visits or activities are, are in fact, you know, there's their standard amounts that are negotiated across your sites. But again, you still have the flexibility of, um, of, of doing overrides and exceptions. So that's what where I think Siebel Clinicals um, uh, excels really nicely. So it does provide uh, a, uh, an excellent platform for, you know, to standardize process, standardize um, you know uh, things across the board across studies, but then it also provides you with a mechanism for flexibility as well. So it's really uh, up to the organization on on how uh, you know how you implement it and how you define the process of of using the system. But the system is capable uh, and has you know functionality that that enables you to, to you know either enforce standardization and, and enforce a process or allow some flexibilities within that process. And that's where, um, you know, the implementation of, of, of Siebel Clinical, uh, that's where you desi design and, and define those, those aspects of the system and the process. Okay. Um, uh, you know, we have about nine minutes left, so what I'm going to do is, is jump back into our presentation and, and look at the questions and, and try to address some of the questions that we've uh, that we've gotten during our um, during our webinar today. Um, so I'm going to jump back and look at our questions here. Uh, we have a question here about um, within CTMS are there regulatory are there regulatory documents that can be managed for investigators? Uh, an example of that is training certification. So um, documents can be tracked for for investigators specifically if they're you know. Um, if they're outside of the context of a study 
or a site, then you would, you would attach or, or track that document specifically against the, that investigator. But if they're uh, used in reference to a site, um, so if you're tracking, for example, uh, essential documents um, that you need um, training certifications and CVs for all PIs and sub-I's on a particular site, then you would also track that document potentially at the site level because that's the complete package of documentation that you need to initiate a site and you want to make sure that you have that and you've tracked it. So you would do that at the, at the site level as well. Uh, next question is, is there any possibility to, for a monitor to fill in the data remotely when he is on site? Um, and with Siebel, uh, absolutely. So there's a couple different ways to do that. Siebel does have a, um, a remote capability. <clears throat> and what that means is that uh, instead of logging directly to um, the website, if you have Internet access to logging into the website of your Siebel implementation, um, there is a local version, um, you know, a standalone version of Siebel that can be installed on uh, a monitor's uh, laptop uh, so that when they're not connected, they can still have access to their data and still have access to the same Siebel user interface that we just looked at. And what it does is it works similarly, uh, similar to like Outlook, for example. So you have the same user interface for Outlook when you're connected or not connected. And when you log, when you enter an email or, or you know, uh, draft an email, and then um, you know, it sort of sits waiting in a queue until when you do log in, and then it sends it off. So with Siebel too, uh, Siebel Remote allows for that, where if you're on a site that doesn't have Internet access, you have that capability to um, have the application open, uh, enter in all of your data, and then w when you are connected uh, to the Internet, you can actually uh, sync your changes to that data to your um, you know, central uh, server application, and then your changes will be reflected in, in, the, uh, uh, in the server application then. Next question is, um, let's see. Can you present an example of how integration of the system um, uh, in CTMS? Um, what I'd like you to do for that question is, is actually point you to uh, a couple of different webinars that we've done in the past. We did a, a webinar um, related to integration. It talks about all the integrations that we've done uh, in the past and actually gives a, um, a demo of a, uh, an integration with uh, an EDC solution that we did. And also just recently we did a, a webinar around um, integration with a document management system. Um, that's also on our website. So uh, please uh, visit the website to look at those uh, specific webinars. And if you have further questions around integration, uh, feel free to contact us and, and we, can, we can get a discussion going around that. Um, we have a question. Please touch on how CTMS can assist me in safety reporting and management from the sponsor side. Um, so CTMS, uh, you know, our, our Ascend solution specifically has uh, the capability of tracking, you know, from a monitoring perspective, uh, adverse events and, and, and serious adverse events um, that are that are monitored. Uh, so you can actually track those within CTMS. Uh, but CTMS is not designed to be your safety system, right? So your your, you know, for, from an Oracle perspective, Argus safety. Um, what will be your, you know, your robust safety, um, uh, clinical safety system, and uh, there is integration points between CTMS and, and Argus Safety uh, that can be done, you know, specifically tying for reconciliation purposes the adverse events and serious adverse events that you monitor from a clinical trial perspective to the actual case and records, um, safety records within the Argus system. You can actually do that integration. Um, so there's, there's touch points between the two and integration opportunities between the two, um, but, but CTMS itself is not going to be um, your, your, uh, you know, a replacement for your, your safety system, for example. Um, another question is, can a monitoring report be edited from the data entered into CTMS? Um, yes. So um, specifically with Ascend, um, 
I believe we also have a webinar uh, related to trip reports um, and, and, and how that's done within, within our system. Uh, so basically the, the electronic trip report within CTMS is built off the data that you're entering at the site and subject level. So it's actually pulling in uh, you know, enrollment statistics, it's pulling in you know, adverse event information, it's pulling in um, follow-up issues that you're tracking at the site. So everything that you're actually managing at the site has um, uh, you know, the capability to be pulled into the monitoring report. So if you want to update and edit a monitoring report before you submit it or, or after submission if it got rejected and you need to update it, you're able to do that all electronically within the system and even submit it for electronic approval with e-signatures. So we've actually built that capability as well. So you're able to do the you know, creation, completion, submission, and, and approval, uh, um, and even archiving in, into your document management system all electronically through you know, the configurations that we've done to the system plus a, an integration to your document management system for your, ET, your, your trial master file. So um, you know, through that, that configuration, you can actually do that whole workflow for uh, monitoring report um, uh, approvals directly in the system electronically. Um, what language capabilities and options are there? Um, so Siebel Clinical actually provides um, multi-language, you know, multi multi-currency um, support. So you can actually um, you know, render the user interface in, in multiple languages if you have sites, if you have you know, offices in, in various uh, country locations. Um, so you, your, your language uh, capabilities and options are, are um, uh, you know, f f fairly large. You, know, you have, um, I, I've seen, um, we, we, Siebel also do kanji, you know, Japanese implementations. So um, it actually uh, provides you a lot of options. So you're not limited to do just an English only or a, a you know, single language uh, implementation. You can actually, you know, global organizations that are, quite large have done multiple languages uh, and it's still one system. It's one central repository, but it's, it's, it's rendered in, in multiple languages so, so um, uh, you know, different uh, uh, employees and resources at various locations can actually have a, um, um, you know, uh, their language specific uh, uh, application. Uh, how do you apply changes for the uploaded visits, updated visit in case there is an amendment? Um, so after you do an amendment <clears throat> in, in the administration screen that we were in, uh, when you go down to the site level, um, you basically decide which sites are actually going to be working on that amended version of the protocol. So once you get that approval uh, on a site-by-site -site basis, you know, you need to get that, that um, amended uh, protocol approved for, for use at each of those sites. So you'd, you would actually do that at the site level. And then at the subject level, if you've already enrolled patients on the version one of the protocol, you have a decision to make. Are, do you so if the, if the amendment was, let's say, on the screening visit, and you've already screened those patients and now they're in enrollment, well, you don't necessarily need to move them into the second version of the protocol because it's all the same. So you have a, um, a choice at the subject level as well whether um, you move those subjects to the second version of the protocol or, or let them finish out all of their planned visits uh, on the original version. So there's, there's different levels of, of um, approval or, or, or you know, process steps that need to be made um, you know, when you do an amendment. So, but it's nothing different than the same decisions that you would make you know, outside of the system, right? So, um, the system, again, allows for that flexibility to have different pathways for different um, uh, sites, you know, as those decisions are made. How, is, how different is CTMS from an ETMF program? Uh, well, CTMS um, is managing um, all of your, you know, what I like to say is, is your metadata for your trial. So your, all your activities, um, you know, all your tasks, everything that you're doing from a monitoring perspective, uh, your investigator's performance, your you know, investigator's contact details, um, you know, things like that. So CTMS is really um, your management tool for your study. 
Um, your trial master file is the repository of all of your, you know, your, your, uh, your trial documents. So there's a relationship in that, you know, again, when I talked about document tracking, um, uh, document tracking is what you do in your CTMS to make sure that all your documents are, are moving from place to place and, and you're, you're, you're tracking the status of, of those documents but your ETMS is actually your physical store of your electronic, all of your electronic, uh, you know, PDF documents, um, you know, in your trial master file. So that, um, uh, that's the difference there. So you're, you're, you know, you're tracking all of your activities, metadata, and, and, and tracking your documents in one system, and the other system, you know, is, is your document management store of um, of your trial master, you know, your trial master file, all your trial documents that you're, you know, signing, approving, and and uh, um, your full um, sort of accounting of, of uh, all those um, all those documents. Um, I don't see. Uh, I don't. I think that was our last question. Um, and unless there are any last minute questions, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, again, if if you do have any, uh, please just submit it to the chat feature. I know we're a little bit over time, but if there are questions, I'll be happy to ask, uh, answer them. Uh, okay, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. So um, I want to thank you all for sharing uh, the past hour or so with me. I hope you found it, uh, it was time well spent. Uh, we do also have um, additional webinars um, coming up. Uh, we're at, uh, in, uh, uh, in September. Um, I forget the topic uh, we're doing in September. Um, oh, uh, in September, yeah, we're, we're going to be looking at um, Siebel Clinical from a job function perspective. So, uh, for example, if you're a clinical finance person or a study manager or a CRA, we're going to be looking at how CTMS applies to you for your specific role uh, within the system. Um, and just a reminder, again, in October, we are going to take a break from our webinars because we do have our uh, annual OSUG, uh, Oracle Health Science User Group Conference. Uh, so we're going to be presenting a few sessions there as well. Um, so we hope to see you all there. Um, and uh, just a last reminder, again, today's webinar is, is being recorded. Um, so we are going to uh, post it on our website, um, and, and uh, it will be up there within 24 hours or so. Um, and if you do have any additional questions or uh, you'd like to discuss uh, your organization's needs or, uh, you know, specific to today's session, if you're building a business case and want to have a more detailed discussion about that, um, you know, feel free to contact me directly. Uh, my email address is on, on the screen. And um, uh, with that, I want to thank everyone again, and I hope uh, you enjoy the, the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Please stand by.